welcome again. So we are here with uh, the CEO himself of the Nigeria Global and he will demonstrate to us how the solar panel works. Uh, unfortunately, we will not be able to enter because the gate is locked, but we will fly the drone so that we can give a view of how it works. Welcome. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. And welcome to all your viewers. This is the first solar field in the Middle East. Whoa. In and the Middle East? In the Middle East. The first one in Israel and in the Middle East. Wow. It was connected by our team 10 years ago. Wow. So it's halfway through its life right now, wow. uh, as, as we speak. Yes. And. Uh, you know, as you know, the 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 Syrian East African rift yes. goes from, from here all the way down to Kenya. So, uh, so maybe we, Fali, yeah. all the way down to the Rift Valley, Lake Victoria, right? Yeah. So maybe the message will come of solar uh, <laughs> all the way right, right, right down here and down 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 to uh, to the Rift Valley. Yeah. There's eighteen thousand five hundred panels. Eighteen thousand five hundred panels. Four point yeah. nine megawatts. Wow. It cost about $26 million back when we did it. $26 million. $26 million. Oh. Today it would be much, much cheaper. Mm -hmm. uh, it would be under $10 million. Yes. Uh, and uh, you see how clean the panels are? Yeah. Because wow. we have robots that will wake up in about an hour. Yes. And all automated without water they yes. will clean the dust because mm -hmm. in the desert the dust is an issue yes so they'll, they'll clean the they'll clean the dust yes and uh since then i've built uh, another 11 fields me and the different teams that, yes. that i get to work with in different parts of israel yes so there's, the there's, so arava power mm -hmm. when i was with it built eight fields mm -hmm. And then we built uh, in the U.S. one, but we did Rwanda was the first one in all of Sub-Saharan Africa. Uh, you launched it last year, right? Uh, no, 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 Rwanda was already 2014, 2015. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Burundi right now. Wow. And hopefully soon Kenya, South Sudan, Liberia, a bunch of other countries. We, wow. we hope, we hope, we hope, we hope. We just need your leaders to say, okay, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because this works. And... Um, this, this hits the local grid, mm -hmm. which supplies the, the communities uh, in this area. So but maybe just to interrupt you, after producing the energy from the field, yeah. do you supply to the national grid or to the local direct? So it belongs to the electric company. It hits the 33 kV line, mm -hmm. which is only for the communities. Mm -hmm. If you look in the distance, you see the big towers. Yes. That's the super high voltage, 161 kV. Yes. And that goes from the north of the country down to Eilat. Mm -hmm. And this power doesn't go there. Yeah. But across the street, yeah. we have a field eight times the size of this, 40 megawatts. How many panels are this? That is 1,000, uh, 144,343 panels. 144,343 panels, 40 megawatts over there. So you see the towers? Yes. So it brings that energy to the national grid. It goes to Eilat and it powers a third of Eilat during the summer, during the day. Wow. Yeah. So our, our message to Africa is that both at a village level, at a town, at a city, and a national and local grid, yeah. it can all go solar. It can all go solar. So maybe if you may ask, like at that time you worked with the national government or you worked with the local government to establish this field? So we had a partnership with our municipality. Mm -hmm. They were very helpful in lobbying the national government. Mm -hmm. Again, just like in Kenya, we have to deal with our Kengen, right? The Israel Electric Company. Mm -hmm. And so we needed all the regulations and the ministers all wow. to, to also agree. Mm -hmm. So it's sort of what you described how to work with the counties and the governors and the uh, national. Yeah. So we did that here yeah. in the Elat Elot region. Mm -hmm. So you have to work with both. And um, about the solar panel, mm -hmm. like we, I, I, I find the some of the challenge, like um, after it produces the energy, you have issues with storage. How yes. do you manage to store the power? Okay, so right now yeah. we're producing more than 100% of the needs of the region mm -hmm. during the day. Mm -hmm. The extra goes on the big grid line and yeah. we send up north. So that's during the day. Mm -hmm. Storage is coming. So um, it's not only going to be batteries, mm -hmm. it's also um, compressed air at Kibbutz Yahel. Oh. 
It's going to be flywheels that kind of keep going after they've gotten their boost. Yes. Um, and, and other experiments. So right now, during the day, we're 100%. Mm -hmm. But we'll be the first region that will be night and day, powered by the sun, by 2025. Wow. So you don't have any like batteries? No storage right now for okay. this. Right. Uh -huh. So and um, are But you... think about Kenya. Yeah. Imagine if all the energy during the day mm -hmm. came from the sun mm -hmm. and you didn't have to use your hydro during the day. Mm -hmm. You could use that like a battery. You can store your water during the day. Yes. And then at night, the reservoirs will be fuller and you'll have more energy. Ah. See, we don't have hydro. You've been blessed with hydro, even though it's yeah, uncertain. Yeah, it's have some source of water, yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, um, in terms of the efficiency of the panel, you talked about, uh, like, in this region, because we have, um, like, in, in Kenya, a strong winds. Yes. And uh, one of the way you increase the efficiency of the energy here right. is the direction of the wind. That's right. Yeah. So, I'm trying to imagine, does it mean that if you have strong wind, it's the chances that you can also produce a lot of energy or... Yeah, so you've been blessed with a lot of... Yeah. God has been good to Kenya, yeah. and, now <laughs> we, and now we need Kenya to be you know, good yeah. to the world. Yeah. Because you, you have geothermal, right? Yeah. You have wind, you have hydro, and you have sun. You don't need to be burning anything anymore. Like you, you don't, <laughs> so the Lake Turkana wind project is one of the world-class projects, and yeah. in many places in Kenya, there's very good wind. Mm -hmm. What's great about wind that it's usually better at night. Yes. So therefore, go 100% solar during the day. Yes. At night, hold back, hold back your water to use it at night and use the wind at night. Uh -huh. And you won't need to burn expensive and polluting fossil fuels anymore. And do you have any plan to develop a solar panel that can work in the cold regions? Huh? So actually the, the panels, um, be, these are silicon, which means that when it gets past a certain temperature, usually yeah. it's not so efficient mm -hmm. that you can feel the wind, right? Yeah. Yes. And so the wind cools the back of the panels right now. Ah, this is why they are facing... A... That's one of the reasons why. It's 27 degrees facing south. Yeah. The maximum efficiency for the light, but also for the wind to mm -hmm. cool it. Um, and uh, our w w wind is very point specific you have to really be at the right spot mm -hmm. where the solar you can almost put anywhere mm -hmm. so our vision we're doing this in zambia mm -hmm. we're going to do the first co-located wind and solar plant because we have two years of studies uh, and and it was gorgeous yeah. about the spot in kenya in uh, zambia yeah so the sun goes like this right yeah. the energy when the sun starts to set yeah the wind picks up in uh -huh. harmony day and night and so uh, we hope to prove in Zambia that yeah. you can do wind and solar in certain specific locations yeah. and you don't need batteries and you don't need to burn fossil fuels. Wow. That's part of our vision for Africa. Really, that was um, uh, great. What is your last message to, in that, from the point of, from green energy point of view, to developing a nation? Yeah. So. Just like with the cell phones, right? Yeah. It didn't used to be that African countries had a lot of phone lines, right? But with the cell phones, there's a leapfrog, right? All of a sudden, right? There's, there's like a billion cell phones on the continent, right? Yeah. So solar technology and renewable is a leapfrog technology. We don't always have to wait for a national grid or big systems. Yeah. Is that the people and the communities and the businesses and the NGOs yeah. and counties and governments, yeah. they can just jump now into the future. Mm -hmm. And it saves them money, it brings economic development, yeah. and it's good for the planet. And we're in a race against time for the planet and, yeah. and, and our children. So stop burning things yeah. and just get out there and build these. Maybe... Um... This, I, 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 I ask this question for, for our viewers. Someone who wants to maybe is qualified and is willing to work with an agile global, uh -huh. maybe from Zambia, Burundi, uh -huh. Rwanda, yes. Kenya. Yes. What will be like uh, the, the terms of, uh, in terms of requirement? Right, yeah. so thank you very much. We, we always work with local yeah. partners because you know, we will never understand the, the culture, the politics, mm -hmm. as well as a, a local person. Exactly. So we need, we need people who understand business, who yeah. 
understand government, mm -hmm. who understand that they have to protect our good name. Mm -hmm. We're bound by the Foreign Corruption Practices Act of the U U.S. and the anti-bribery of the U.K. Yeah. And unfortunately, some of these, um, some of the officials on the continent always don't uh, appreciate that uh, it's a condition that we won't bring our, our investments there. So we need good people who also understand the te technology. Yes. My best advice is, you know, learn in the university something related to it. Yes. And then, you know, start start small. Like, get your hands, yeah. you know, roll up your sleeves and get to work and yeah. help a local company yeah. uh, and get some experience and be in touch with us, you know, through our Facebook and uh, Twitter and um, st stay in touch. And uh, let's say a, a, a local company in Kenya, uh, which is uh, like uh, just started, uh, maybe it's not a big company and wants to work with the uh, Nigeria Global, uh, yeah. one of the local companies. A uh, subcontractor, yeah. yeah. Does it have, must have like, um, like working in terms of uh, energy related uh, contracts or in the company? Yeah, so what does it take to build a solar field? You need civil works, mm -hmm. right? You have to be able to flatten the land in many cases. Some places we leave it. Mm -hmm. But uh, you have civil works, you have here fencing, right? Uh -huh. um, the basic uh, electrical engineering, mm -hmm. um, you, know, you, need, you need people also, qualified electricians, but the connecting of the actual wires and, you know, you need someone who, who's certified to be able to do the inspection yeah. uh, on it. Um, but there's there's many including there's guarding yeah. and there's the maintenance and there, there's plenty of jobs for local subcontractors. Um, we don't pick the subcontractors. What it is is we bid out the global engineering mm -hmm. to um, international companies, but we tell them they have to hire locally as much as possible. Uh -huh. um, so the people can, you know, keep up with us on uh, both the Gigawa Global and the Energia Global uh, yeah. websites and yeah. see as our projects get close to getting ready to be built, to be in touch. Mm -hmm. um, I must appreciate, Linda, like you have taken your time and a great honor thank you, thank to you. take us through one of the first fields. I must say I'm very privileged to have, to have a tour of the first field, <laughs> not only in Israel, but in the Middle East, yes. by the person who, who was behind well, it's a, it's the team, team effort, it's yeah. a team effort. Yeah. I really appreciate, and I know what you have shared with us is going to really not only change in terms of the perception, but also this knowledge is good to help people know that something is happening. Like you talk about main projects in Kenya, right. which many local may not understand, right. but through this information, right. people get to understand that certain projects are working yeah. and they embrace it. And yes. they, this way also help to ensure acceptability and sustainability of the project. Yeah. I'm greatly honored and no, looking no, no, forward. No, no. Thank you. And uh, His Excellency the President Kenyatta. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'll be at the COP26 in Glasgow at the UN Climate. I want to meet you there, sir. Yeah. Your Excellency. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, okay.